All right, this is a quick video to show a feature of Dynamo that sometimes confuses people or messes people up. Um, so I want to take a moment to show it. I just have a simple Revit model with a Dynamo window open. We'll fire up this file that I have. So in Dynamo for Revit, if you've ever created an element with an out-of-the-box node, like a family instance by point, uh, as you update it in Dynamo, you'll notice that Revit updates the element as you update the geometry. Additionally, you'll notice that the element ID stays the same. So Dynamo isn't recreating this element every time. Uh, this concept is called element binding, and there's a great thread on the Dynamo forum that describes this, and I'll link it as well. Uh, this is to help us out. Uh, so if this was not the case, we would create that element every single time we made a change, which is not always what we'd want, especially with something like what I'm doing right now. Uh, these values are also persistent between open and close of the Dynamo file. So if I open Dynamo again and I start updating this point, it reattaches itself to this element. Uh, this concept, once again, is referred to as element binding or serializing the values into the Dynamo file. So we can also view this in a Notepad++ editor window. I like to use Notepad++ because it will reload changes as they happen. So if we load this file, this is the Dynamo file, we can see that there's a section called bindings. So within this section, we have a whole lot of values that tell Dynamo how to reattach to that Revit model. Uh, this is what's handling all of those changes. Uh, so luckily, we're able to disable this, actually. Uh, so there's this node that will be in rhythm here soon to where you can toggle that element binding action. So if we were to toggle this to false, copy this node, and get rid of the original, we'll notice that I actually have a new instance of it, of this cabinet. And if I hit save, close, I can view this in a text editor again. We'll notice that it made some changes and we'll see that our bindings are now empty. So after I toggle the element binder to false, any of the nodes placed after the fact will not have binding. So they won't be serializing in this file. So if I open my binding file, and I change this coordinate, we'll see that I get a new cabinet once again. So Dynamo has basically started over each time fresh. Uh, previously, people achieved this by just deleting that text in the um, Dynamo file in a text editor, uh, but it's just nice to be able to do it automatically. So once again, we'll refresh the Dynamo graph, move our point, and we'll see that I get another new cabinet. So this is useful if you have workflows to where you want to run them several times. You can just toggle your DYN file, uh, rerun it, and it effectively acts the same as like a Dynamo player that does this already. Uh, so there it is. This should be in the rhythm package here soon. Uh, it's already on the GitHub. It's, it's literally one line of code. It's not bad at all. Element binder is enabled. Uh, if you're wondering why this can only be done in a zero touch node, or a C-sharp node. It's because in the Dynamo source code, when you use Python, they're actually disabling this and re-enabling it before the Python node is ran and after. So even if you disable it in Python, it re-enables afterwards by nature. That's how the Dynamo engine handles the Python node. Um, that's something that I had to work through and was a little frustrating. Uh, but in a C-sharp node, it actually works pretty well. So there it is. There's a quick explanation. Uh, thanks for checking it out.